दवस तिहाक में अनलिमिटेड नेटफ्लिक्स बालन अनलिमिटेड डेटा पैक के काक मूल्य पावल टबे अनलिमिटेड फन ने का कारगन आदम में एक्टिव करगन लेंगा तुम में वैटी करगन लाओजी रुपया पन हटा दूँगा मामे एन अब इतने का बोम <laughs> headlines tonight minus 1 virus death toll revised to 21 after 22nd ruled as suicide meanwhile the epidemiology unit decides that covid-19 patients with no symptoms after 14 days can be sent home readying for the lockdown preparations for home deliveries get underway while the education ministry extends school holidays by two more weeks Quick response Attorney General instructs acting IGP to probe allegations of fraudulent acquisitions of properties belonging to expat Sri Lankans Hope over the horizon Central Bank report projects Sri Lanka's GDP to contract by 1.7% this year but steady recovery predicted next year All this and much more coming up tonight on First at 9 This Monday the 2nd of November 2020 Nava Sunlight Sakura then Dikkal Pavathina Sakura Mal Suvandin From Ada Verona This is Ada Verona first at 9 live from Studio 24 in Colombo A very warm welcome. I'm Indi Variamwatta bringing to you live news from across Sri Lanka and around the world on Other Derana English. With most Sri Lankans having expected to go back to some semblance of normalcy today, their hopes were dashed with the extension of the Western Province curfew announced yesterday. Now with that, the government gave the green light for delivery of essential food items to help people cope with the movement restrictions. that prevent them from being able to restock their essential needs accordingly the issuance of curfew passes worked off during the day at divisional secretariats across the province today in the meantime the ministry of health released a set of detailed guidelines for members of the public and business operators to adhere to in non curfew areas A meeting with Western Province parliamentarians and public officials was worked off today at the Temple Trees, chaired by the head of the Presidential Task Force on Economic Revival, Basil Rajapaksa. During the meeting, a discussion was taken to begin distributing a 5000 rupee relief payment to families who have lost their sources of income or employment as a result of the curfew. In the meantime, the Ministry of Health issued a set of guidelines to be adhered to by residents in areas not under curfew. Accordingly, only two members of each family are allowed to leave their homes unless they are engaged in the provision of essential services or employed in such institutions. Further, public transport in these areas will be allowed to carry 75% of the vehicle's passenger seating capacity. In addition, three-wheelers and cars engaged in providing taxi services are only allowed to transport two passengers per trip. Meanwhile, essential services institutions including electricity, water, telecommunication, Postal and courier services can carry out their business activities with a minimum staff requirement. Further, both state and private sector offices will be allowed to operate with a minimum staff with work from home also permitted for some staff. Meanwhile, export-oriented industries have been instructed to ensure secure accommodation for their workers and are required to provide staff transport as well. In the meantime, supermarkets, shopping malls and textile shops are allowed to carry out businesses with a 50% restriction on customers entering their premises at any given time. Accordingly, the guidelines have outlined a 1.5 square meter walking space as adequate for a single customer within the premises. Further, banks will only be allowed to accommodate a maximum of 50% of their total customer capacity at any given time. The same will apply to groceries, open markets or fairs, economic centers and bakeries as well. Barber shops and beauty saloons, laundries, tailor shops and dressmakers, photocopy shops and courts will also be expected to adhere to these regulations. Meanwhile, the health sector will be expected to function with a minimum cadre according to the instructions. 
However, schools, tuition classes, higher education centers and universities will remain closed while daycare centers and preschools are allowed to operate with a 50% student capacity. In addition, places of worship can remain open to 25 worshippers at a time and activities have been banned. Liquor retail stores meanwhile are permitted to open for business in strict accordance to safety protocols as long as crowding is strictly controlled. In the meantime, the management of the Manning Market in Petta have decided to close the market until further notice following the curfew extension. With members of the public unable to venture out to restock essentials, Minister of Agriculture Mahinda Nanda Arudgamage stated that the provision for essential food items to those in the Western Province will be carried out via the economic centres. Meanwhile, Police Media Spokesperson DIG Ajit Rohana had this to say about the home delivery of essential food items in curfew-hit areas. The divisional secretaries have been given permission to issue curfew permits in respect of those services. Each supermarket or satosa or any other institution, each shop can run 15 delivery services by using their motor vehicles or three-wheelers or motorcycles. Each food center can implement 10 delivery services and in addition to that all the pharmacies are allowed to implement their own delivery services in order to provide essential drug items to the people who are living in the respective area. This delivery services system is implemented from today. The police headquarters has amended the circuit that was issued day before yesterday in respect of the employees who have been granted to use their official ID card as the curfew permit. Initially, there were 84 institutions. According to amended circular, it has been extended up to 102 institutions. The ministries, government and non-governmental institutions, the corporations and statutory boards. So therefore, employees of those 102 institutions can use their official ID as the curfew permit. In another development, the provision of curfew passes to vendors engaged in home delivering essential food items to residents in curfew hit areas was worked off at all divisional secretariats in the province today. Safeguard Hand Sanitizer Navatama Nishpadana Pella Neeru Kimatthi Vyakata Health authorities today decided to rule the country's 22nd COVID-19 death reported today as a suicide and revised the official death toll back to 21. Now, the decision was made as authorities determined that the COVID-19 virus played no part in the victim's cause of death. In the meantime, the epidemiology unit stated that a positive COVID-19 patient who do not display symptoms 14 days after detection can be safe safely return to their homes with no risk of the infection spreading to the others. Sri Lanka recorded its 21st COVID-19 death yesterday of a 40-year-old resident in Hinagama in Gampaha. According to the Department of Government Information, the patient had been admitted to the National Hospital for Respiratory Diseases in Valisara on the 23rd of October due to high blood pressure and a respiratory tract infection. He had reportedly been treated in a ward where a COVID-19 patient has been previously detected. However, after being subjected to a PCR test on the 25th of October, he had tested negative for the virus and had subsequently been sent home on the 29th of October. According to the Department of Government Information, the patient had passed away due to respiratory complications on Sunday the 31st of October at his residence. His remains were taken to the Gampa General Hospital by the Malvatu Pitiya police officers where tests confirmed him to be COVID-19 positive. His final rites were conducted at the Kasagahavata crematorium last night in accordance with stipulated health and safety guidelines. In the meantime, health authorities decided today not to count the death reported as the country's 22nd COVID-19 fatality. The epidemiology unit stated that the country's total number of deaths has thereby been revised down to 21. Health authorities stated that this decision was made as the COVID-19 infection had no part in the cause of the death due to the 27-year-old committing suicide. In the meantime, Chief Epidemiologist Dr. Sudat Samaravira says that confirmed COVID-19 patients who do not display symptoms after 14 days of quarantine can return home without fear of spreading. <laughs> Pay Rate in a Danamot Pavichikala, PCR Parikshana Kil Sidukirimakin Torava, 
රෝග ලක්ෂණ නැති රෝගීන් රෝහල් වලින් මුදා හැරීම සඳහා ඒ අනුව රෝග ලක්ෂණ නැති කොවිඩ් 19 ආසාදිතින්ට ඔවුන්ගේ සාමාන්‍යයෙන් දින 14ක් නැත්නම් දින 10ක් 17ක් අතර කාලයක් ගියාට පස්සේ තව කෙනෙකුට ආසාදනය කරන්න පුළුවන් ශක්තියක් නැහැ ඒ නිසා ඔන්න කිසිම බයක් සැකක් නැතුව ශාස්ත්‍රයකින් යුතුව ඔන්න නැවතත් නිවස් වලට මුදා හැරින්න පුළුවන් පිසා පරීක්ෂණයක් සිදු කිරීම අවශ්‍ය නැහැ මොකද පිසා පරීක්ෂණෙන් අපි හඳුනා ගන්නේ මේ වෛරසයේ තියෙන කොටස් මිසක් සජීවී වෛරසයක්ද නැද්ද කියන එක නෙවෙයි ඒ නිසා බේදක්ව ලෝකේ කරපු අධ්‍යයන වලින් හොඳින්ම තහවුරු වෙලා තියෙනවා ඒ වගේ අයගේ දවස් 10ක් 17ක් අතර කාලයක් ගියාට පස්සේ තවත් කෙනෙකුට බෝ කළ හැකි තත්ත්වයේ සජීවී වෛරස නැහැයි කියලා ඒ නිසා තමයි අපි ඒ වගේ තීරණයක් ගත්තේ එය අපේ රටේ තියෙන සෞඛ්‍ය පද්ධතියේ තියෙන රෝහල් වලට ඇතුල් කරපු රෝගීන්ව විධිමත්ව නැවතත් නිවෙස් කරා යාමත් ඒ වගේම අපේ PCR පරීක්ෂණ වඩාත් ඵලදායි විදිහට පාවිච්චි කිරීමත් එය උදව් වෙනවා Meanwhile a total of 275 COVID-19 patients were confirmed today a total of 397 covid-19 infections were confirmed from the island yesterday the figure included 197 from the gampa district 93 from the kalambo district 33 from the kaluthara district 19 from the kegal district 11 from the kurunagal district 5 from the districts of kandy and batiklo and 2 from the districts of gol and puttalam out of the remaining 48 cases 41 were detected at quarantine centers while the remaining cases were identified in the districts of Mathura, Hambantota, Trincomalee, Ratnapura, Polonnaru, Mana and Anuradhapura. Elsewhere steps were taken to isolate the two villages of Heniyavala and Asirigama in the Pannara Divisional Secretariat area of Kurunegala. These measures were taken after three employees of the Pannara Pradesh Sabha residing in those areas were confirmed as COVID-19 positive. In another development, four firefighters at the fire service department headquarters in Maradana, Colombo have tested positive for the COVID-19 virus. The three firefighters have been identified as residents of Kadavata, Piliandara, Valallavita and Minuangoda. In the meantime, the Indian High Commission in Colombo announced today that a staff member has been diagnosed with COVID-19 and has been admitted to the government treatment center. The embassy stated that the staff member had minimal interaction with the chancellery building and all primary contacts of the patient have been subjected to PCR test as per the stipulated health and safety norms. In other developments a doctor at the obstetrics and gynecology unit of the Trincomalee General Hospital has tested positive for the virus. A hospital official stated that the doctor had recently undergone a PCR test examination due to an illness while he was at his residence in the Kotahena area. He further stated that three doctors who worked with him have been directed to self quarantine following this. Meanwhile, health authorities took measures to direct around 50 COVID-19 positive fishmongers who identified to have been associated with the Paliguda fish market cluster to treatment centers. Elsewhere, after PCR tests were conducted on 32 persons self quarantined in the Kiriyella Divisional Secretariat in Ratnapura, two persons were confirmed with the COVID-19 virus. In another development a PCR test confirmed that a three wheel driver who was admitted to the Kaluthara district general hospital on the 29 due to an illness was covid-19 positive the driver had reportedly transported passengers to Colombo Vallavatta and Morotua as a result of this health authorities are conducting investigations to identify all contacts in the meantime seven more police personnel at the Borella police station have been diagnosed as covid-19 positive As such a total of 135 police personnel have now tested positive for the covid-19 virus so far a special system uh, is implemented from today in order to supervise the persons who have been ordered to be quarantined at their respective residences and homes it is an quarantine order it has been observed and we have received information that sometimes the persons who have been ordered to be quarantined leave their houses in absence of police officers and health workers visits so therefore it has been decided to get the support from the grama seva niladaris and in addition to that the members of local government authorities in order to supervise the places where the people have been ordered to be self quarantine in addition to that police are going to deploy police officers in order to make surveillance in respect of the places where the persons have been ordered to be self quarantine if a person who is who has been ordered on quarantine procedures and 
if he has left the place without the quarantine order he is dealt with the quarantine law and in addition to that if a outsider is visiting the the quarantine place he is committing an offence under the quarantine law and he is also dealt with the quarantine rules and regulation meanwhile measures were taken to close the kanan ania kan the rural ayurveda clinic today after a staff member was diagnosed with the virus the staff in question had reportedly visited the paliagoda fish market In other developments health authorities took measures to conduct PCR tests on another 500 employees at the apparel factory located in Gurugoda Horana A quarantine curfew has been imposed in the Haliagoda and Kuliyapetia police divisions and within the limits of the Kurunagala Municipal Council from 5 a.m. today to 5 a.m. on Monday the 9th of November this is in line with the extension of the curfew uh, in the western province Meanwhile the Ministry of Education decided to extend second term school holidays until the 23rd of this month. School holidays were originally scheduled to end on the 9th of November. The government yesterday extended the quarantine curfew imposed throughout the western province until the 9th of November owing to the spike in the number of COVID-19 infections in the province. It was scheduled to be lifted at 5 a.m. today. In addition, curfew has also been imposed in the Kurunagala town area as well as the Kuliyapitiya and Ahliyagoda police areas until the 9th of November. Similarly, travelling between districts has been restricted as well. In the meantime, the curfew was seen being strictly implemented across the western province today. <laughs> Meanwhile, following stern warnings to curfew violators from the police, 22 suspects were arrested in Morotua. Police media spokesperson DIG Ajit Rohna commented on the number of arrests made by the police of those who attempted to circumvent quarantine regulations. as of today from the 30th of october within a period of 3 days time we have arrested 30 suspects in respect of disrespecting the face mask concept and social distancing concept we are conducting further operations in non quarantine areas in order to detect the persons who are disobeying with quarantine rules and regulations uh, we are monitoring the situation and as of today we have arrested uh, 70 suspect in this connection and they are being produced before the courts and if they are found guilty of the uh, the charges un- under the quarantine law the court can impose 10000 rupees fine and apart from that 6 month rigorous imprisonment in the meantime following the extension of the curfew throughout the western province the ministry of education has decided to extend the second term school holidays until the 23rd of this month school holidays were originally scheduled to come to an end on the 9th of november and we'll return with more news after this short break to stay with us Ceylon Bank the bank with a heart Welcome back. Attorney General Dapula de Oliveira has issued written instructions to Acting Inspector General of Police CD Vikramaratna calling for an investigation to be launched into the alleged forceful occupation of properties owned by Sri Lankans living overseas. In the letter the attorney general has noted that there were allegations that certain politicians were abusing their powers by entering private properties and acquiring them through illegal means reports circulating on social media allege that these politicians have been using forged deeds to take over the properties belonging to expatriate sri lankans the acting igp has been instructed to verify the allegations through a cid pro and submit a progress report within 7 days Air Marshal Sudarshan Patirana took over as the 18th commander of the Sri Lanka Air Force today taking over from outgoing Air Force commander Air Marshal Sumangala Dias who was promoted by President Gotabaya Rajapaksa to the four star rank of Air Chief Marshal upon his retirement Air Marshal Sudarshan Patirana held the position of Chief of Staff of the Sri Lanka Air Force prior to his appointment as Air Force commander Former Chief of Staff of the Sri Lanka Air Force Air Marshal Sudarshan Patirana took over duties as Air Force Commander today. 
a product of Dharma Raj College, Kandy. Air Marshal Patirana joined the Sri Lanka Air Force on the 2nd of July 1985, where he completed his basic ground training at S.A. Leif, the Atalava. One of the three pilots who was selected for advanced flying training with the Pakistan Air Force, he secured the award for the best Allied flight cadet and received his commission on the 2nd of January 1987 as a pilot officer in the General Duties Pilot Branch. In 1990, he was selected to be amongst the first six Sri Lankan Air Force pilots to switch to the supersonic F-7BS fighter aircraft with the No. 5 Jet Squadron, and in 1995, he was selected to fly the more advanced Kafir fighter aircraft with the No. 10 Jet Squadron. In the year 2002, he earned the distinction of attending the U.S. Air Force Air Command and Staff College in Alabama, where he became the first Sri Lankan Air Force officer to obtain the prestigious Masters in Operational Art and Science awarded by the University. In the year 2004, he successfully read for his second Masters degree awarded by the General Sir John Kotalavada Defence University. He has participated in almost all major counter-terrorist operations conducted in Sri Lanka and his bravery has been acknowledged with gallantry awards on six occasions. Air Marshal Patirana is one of the few pilots who have been awarded with prestigious green endorsements in his flying logbook by both Pakistani and Sri Lankan Air Forces. Sri Lanka's economy to have contracted by 1.7% in the first quarter. Details after this break. Welcome back. The Export Development Board has assured it will continue to facilitate uninterrupted operations of export industries during the quarantine curfew in the Western Province. In a notice, the EDB said exporters are required to take all safety precautions recommended by the health authorities. The board further said that companies will be expected to adhere to additional guidelines announced by authorities according to the prevailing situation. All non-BOI exporters are advised to obtain a letter from the EDB with instructions on guidelines to be adhered to in carrying out export operations. It added that accordingly all BOI registered companies must contact the BOI The central bank's report titled Recent Economic Developments Highlights of 2020 and Prospects for 2021 says that the Sri Lankan economy, which experienced a below potential growth recent years, encountered renewed challenges amidst the outbreak of COVID-19. Now, the economy is expected to contract by 1.7% in the first quarter of this year, but the report, however, expects economic growth to rebound in 2020 and maintain an upward trajectory in the medium term. Sri Lanka's GDP is projected to contract by 1.7% this year, reflecting the impact of the pandemic-induced fallout, particularly in the second quarter of the year, the Central Bank of Sri Lanka said in its latest report titled Recent Economic Developments, Highlights of 2020 and Prospects for 2021, released last Saturday. However, the CBSL expects the economy to rebound in 2021, as evidenced by the fast recovery in activity since the relaxation of restrictions, and expects an increase in export earnings in the medium term. The report stated that economic growth is expected to rebound in 2021 and maintain an upward trajectory over the medium term, supported by growth policies of the government. Further, policies to boost domestic production are also expected to ease the pressure on the external sector of the economy on a sustained basis. Nevertheless, the success of containing COVID-19 locally and globally remains critical in determining the pace and the magnitude of domestic economic recovery and revival in the period ahead, the report added. Reflecting the combined efforts of the spread of COVID-19 locally and the introduction of lockdown measures, the slowdown in global economic activity and the adverse weather conditions in the country, the economy contracted by 1.6% in the first quarter of 2020 year-on-year, year, according to provisional estimates of the Department of Census and Statistics. GDP estimates for the second quarter have not yet been released by the DCS, citing difficulties in capturing the true nature of disruptions and new activities, as well as novel ways of working that emerged this year with the onset of the pandemic. Now, Sri Lankan shares ended lower today, weighed down by losses in financials and consumer uh, discretionary stocks. The benchmark all share price index ended down 0.23%, while the S&P SL20 index of more liquid stocks fell 0.68%. Meanwhile, the rupee closed weaker at 184 rupees and 50 to 60 cents. Here's a look at how Sri Lankan rupee traded across major currencies.
And before we wrap up the news for tonight, residents of Panadura were in for a rare but potentially dangerous situation for a pod of 30 pilot whales who were stranded at the Panadura beach today. According to our other Therana correspondent residents of the area, the police and the Sri Lanka Coast Guard have taken steps to help them get back to the sea. According to experts, a similar incident had taken place in Sampur several years ago. Apparently, no explanation can be given for such occurrences. But marine biologists say that this possibly happens when the entire pod follows the lead whale close to the shore. Thanks for watching. Good night.